If you've been watching my channel for a while, you probably noticed this 250 GTE sitting in the background um, with not a lot of work getting done on it. And um, I always feel bad about it because it sits here and um, it really needs some attention. So let me tell you a little bit of a uh, story on this car. So this car was painted by another shop, um, disassembled. It was purchased by the current owner, um, pretty much a complete car. And it was disassembled and painted and was supposed to be restored by um, another shop. And things kind of went a little south on it. I think what happened was, um, you know, I don't, I don't even want to tell the whole story, but basically it was a project that, that kind of stalled. Um, and so the owner came to me and said, you know, I, I really would like you to take this project over. And uh, it always puts me in a, in a tough situation because I know the shop that, that was painting the car. Um, I know, you know, kind of everybody who's involved in it. And I know the cars can get into uh, disagreements and, and parts get uh, disassembled and then the project doesn't go anywhere. Other cars get in the way, shops get busy, things change. And all of a sudden you've got a car that, that stalls. Uh, I am a one man show. And so sometimes trying to do a car, it takes, you know, thousands, hundreds, thousands of hours to get something like this done. And with one person, uh, I sometimes feel like I, I don't know if I have the hours to do it, but I would certainly take it on and try to do it and try to make it very really happy. I mean, obviously I'm not putting every single hour into it because you know, we have painters, we have chrome platers, we have uh, engine builders, transmission builders, all that kind of stuff that just gets farmed out. But it still takes someone to logistically uh, push a car through a restoration. And, and I've been involved on both sides in doing the restoration, managing the restoration, uh, consulting on the, uh, the restoration, all sorts of projects. So when uh, the owner came to me and said, you know, I have this car, I really don't know what to do. I I'd like to get it out of the shop, just try to give it some uh, a fresh start. And I said, yeah, sure, I'll take it. And, and unfortunately for me, when I took it, I got this car almost the way you see it, an unbelievable pile of parts. I mean, uh, just piled into, into stuff. I'll show you what I have. So when I got it all, I got pieces and parts that were just thrown in a box and, and screws and bags and things that were just kind of all jumbled together. And so what I started to do was try to put some sense into it and uh, put together, you know, interior stuff. And then I tried to put together, uh, try to try to just figure out what was missing and what was what needed to be put together. Um, and what I do is I start putting things together. Like I, I did the suspension. We had the, the suspension needed to come apart and uh, put that all back together. Uh, took the engine out. The engine needed to be rebuilt, so the engine's done. It's over there. I could show it to you. Um, all these little things, but what would happen was, as I'm putting this car together, I would find out, oh, I need this piece. It's missing. Or I need that piece. It's missing. And so a lot of times what would happen is it would just stall. For instance, I'll give you an example. I was putting the door together, and I'm trying to put the windows together, and all of a sudden I find that this whole piece in here was missing, like some of the some of the the uh, interior pieces. And and so I had to put together a um I had to put together the, the window and try to find out where to get pieces. You know, we're still missing certain pieces. Like I'm missing the little the little uh piece that holds that swings this this window open. So it was it was pretty frustrating. And and so what would happen was when I'm missing a piece and I call around and it's not available this stops because I can't finish the window without putting some of these pieces together. So uh, all of a sudden um, the, the project stalls on that side. I try to move somewhere else and, and uh, we'll do the interior and I'll try to put this piece together and then I'm missing, okay, well, I'm missing this little, this little piece. Okay, well, that kind of stops because I either have to fabricate it and then of course paint it to match and things like that. Uh, so not to get on a rant or anything like that about this car but it, it's been tough it's 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 uh, trying to do the right thing trying to trying to put this car back together um, 
it, it just takes uh, a little, not just assembly, but it also takes a lot of hunting and parts. And what's so tough about hunting for parts is, you know, I could spend an hour on the phone calling different suppliers. Hey, you got this piece? You got that piece? You know, do you have do you have this marker light? Oh, no, I don't have it. Call the next guy. You have this marker light. No, I don't have it. And, and you could waste a half an hour on the phone with, with nothing to show for it. And so do you charge your customer for a half an hour of time to make phone calls that really don't really amount to much? But at the same time, how do you, how do you, I could work for a half an hour and, and actually get paid for, for my time. So it's a real, it's a real struggle. Uh, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll, I'll find some spare time and do some, some projects and, and, uh, or if I'm at a car show or something, Hey, you know, send me a list of parts and, and let me take a look and, and I'll find a piece. And every once in a while I'll look out, I'll find something and, and, and can move up this project a little bit further. But, um, it, it has been tough. So lately, the latest project that I've been working on, which is trying to make the electrical uh, part of this car work, uh, had a new new uh, fuse panel made, and because uh, the original uh, the wiring harness was pulled out of this car, so it really wasn't. Um, they, they, when they painted this car, they they took the wiring harness out. So when I looked at it, it was trying to get all the chopped up pieces put back in. And I just said, you know, the better thing is let's just make a wiring harness. So, um, but of course, putting a, a brand new wiring harness sounds like a great idea. Put it all in, plug and play. But the latest thing that I'm missing on this car is a little junction block. So what I have, let me see if I could show it to you, but there is a little bracket that has a a uh, that's missing the uh, junction block that sits behind the dashboard sounds really insignificant but let me show you on my car uh, what this is on my car which generally is very similar to the car that I'm working on has a under the dash when you look underneath here there is a little Bakelite junction block and basically what that does is that connects the wiring harness to the steering wheel or the the steering column and and it's the turn signals and the uh let's see what else it's the turn signals and the and the overdrive switch and that cable kind of runs up inside to the steering column but um that connects the wiring harness so like i said i had the wiring harness made but the blue car is missing that little junction block. Now, trying to find that junction block is nearly impossible. I mean, you have to take that out of another car. Um, most people don't even know that it exists unless you restore the car. They never even notice that that little block is in there. And uh, trying to explain to someone who's taken a GTE apart, most of them are probably still on the car sitting in a junkyard, but trying to find it and do all that research to find it has just, it's just, you know, it's a it's a wild goose chase. So one of the things that I wanted to do was just try to learn and teach myself how to make one from scratch. So here's where I'm at. So the first thing I had to do was figure out how I was going to make those barrels because nobody, I don't, I, unless you guys know where to find one, I couldn't find barrels that would connect two bullet connectors together. So um, what I came up with was I had these uh, female bullet connectors and um, to connect those two together would have been pretty long and and uh, you know and I had I had these other ones that were steel that had a small little collar on the inside so what I did was I I connected these two together um, pulling the the uh, pulling this out and um, and soldering soldering it all together and this is uh, this is what I came up with I was able to connect these two together and solder it so it makes it into a nice connector it's a little longer than than uh, what i would have liked i would have tried to figure out how to make it a little bit shorter but um, i wanted to make sure that the solder connection was good and that it would make a good electrical contact but uh, so now that i have these little barrels i could move on to the next step of uh, of making that bakelite piece first things first uh find a piece of bakelite so um if you don't know about mcmaster car it, it, I, I have to, it's kind of like, uh, I have to tell you that McMaster car sells just about anything. Uh, look it up on the internet. It, it's, it's 
sometimes I feel like they're a little expensive, but at the same time, um, they, they sell things like this. So I measured it roughly what I was looking for and I found a bar of, of uh, Bakelite. Bakelite is, uh, is, is a, you know, it's kind of like a laminated uh, material, but it's machinable. It's, and that's exactly what that stuff was made out of. So I bought this piece uh, to start and uh, then with Bakelite in hand, um, I am now trying to teach myself how to use my bridge port. So here's another piece of machinery that I have at the shop that um, I've been wanting to teach myself how to use. It is an extremely useful machine, but uh, in the right hands and with the right training. Uh, I sometimes feel like I'm a little late to the game because I didn't take shop class um, and in, in high school, nor did they ever teach you anything on, on how to use a bridge port. So uh, I, I have a lot to learn and using YouTube, because YouTube has everything, um, is to teach me how to use this stuff. So this is the first prototype that I came up with. Uh, so what I did was I uh, measured everything, got it close, and, and tried machining this thing out. It's not you know super straight because I kind of eyeballed some of it. Um, and uh, this is what I came up with. The only thing I didn't like was how far these little connectors protruded out of the piece. I mean, I made it in dimensionally the same as the original piece, but the, the original piece, the, the barrels, the bullet barrels were shorter because they actually had the, the correct piece to make the, the bullet barrels. But I really kind of didn't like the way the thing was looking. It fit, it works. But um, what I decided to do was, was make a second one that's a little wider that will hide the, the barrels a little bit better. That way you're not going to have issues with them sticking out and shorting out. Not that it really would, but I figured um, go ahead since I'm learning how to do this. Um, I machined the, uh, the, the piece down to a, a thinner size. You know, I'll bevel the edges. I'm not going to do all the little details of the, of the original piece. It's really just to get a functional a functional piece that I can put in there but uh, learning how to do all this it's so silly it's like to the to just a regular person you look at this and it's like oh well how hard is that to make well it, it isn't hard to make but you know on a bridge port I'm actually pretty proud of the fact that this is all square and and I was able to cut this all down uh, you know it, it, it's actually a lot more evolved and that's why like it's it's kind of like the project that you look at and say well you know, I'm not charging for time to do all this. Uh, the, the time it takes to to learn how to do this, you know, shouldn't be on my on my customer's time. But at the same time, you know, I have the measurements for all, all this stuff. I have a, a one to copy, so it is worth some of my time. But but to learn how to do this is is certainly uh, something that that's kind of on my time, and I'm I'm actually enjoying it. So I don't mind uh, doing little projects like this. But uh, you could see, I, I can't even tell you how much time it takes to learn how to do all this stuff from, uh, you know, figuring out to get the, the bridge port aligned, trammed, and then uh, mounted, and then the parallels, all that other stuff that, that there are plenty of other YouTube channels that show you how to do it. But um, to learn how to do it and, and, and make something like this is, is, is pretty involved. So anyway, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's what I got. And uh, I'm going to finish this one and, and uh, make a new one at that. All right, here's the new one. So uh, it's uh, it's all done. It's got the uh, it's a little bit wider, and it should fit in okay. So that's like my first little Bridgeport project, uh, and uh, we're moving on to seeing what other parts this car needs.